Hello everybody, my name is Matthew Lavis and this is going to be another how-to slash instructional video and kind of my two cents on what VPN is, as you can see kind of in front of me. First of all, I just want to give a shout out to my company, which is Vitech, and also to my main sponsor, Lightwave Technical Consulting, who does pretty much everything technical, but also they're doing right now, uh, if you need any consultations on Office 365, Microsoft Office 365, for inner office communications and productivity and efficiency in your small, medium, and large inter uh, business, definitely give them a call. Visit their website at lwtechaz.com. To get us started on virtual private networks, definitely the reason why this uh, conversation and why I want to do this how-to video on how to make your own VPN server was because I got a fr uh, friend, uh, technically a business partner, who uses Hide.me. And if you're not familiar with what a virtual private network is, basically it's a tunnel through the cloud that goes to a server encryptedly so it helps protect you when you're on a open Wi-Fi or open internet connection such as at Starbucks, at McDonald's or on the in the airport as an example. There's many other places and what this does is it helps protect you from a man in the middle attack where uh, seemingly the hacker could be able to log on to or not log on to but see your account information as an example even if you visited Facebook you have to enter a username and a password well they could see that via clear text and uh, well you don't want people to get access to bank account information or private information which is why if you are going to use a service like hide.me or VPN book you know definitely do that if you're gonna just visit those kinda of places that's okay but I would definitely I would not use this services for personal private information financial information you know HIPAA information you never want to do something like that could um, as you don't know what they're doing with your traffic you know it'd be perfect if they just pass on that information and send it on your way um, and they're not holding on to it or selling it so we don't know we're, we're trying to put our hands in there are security in somebody else's hands which we don't want to do I'm always a big fan of if you can do it yourself do it yourself as you know you're in charge of your own security and not some companies so first things first is definitely um, check out a cool company for doing this on budget at least check out a good company called cloud at cost this is a free ser uh, free cloud server it's not a free cloud server it is a cloud server with a one-time charge so definitely I would say if you're gonna do this project go at cloud at cost com choose developer one and once you're into developer one uh, they'll get you set up with an account and I went ahead and set one up so the steps are you're gonna go to cloud pro as you can see I have a lot of virtual machines here you go to Cloud Pro and once the Cloud Pro icon clicks let's go ahead and refresh this page uh, once that clicks you're going to go ahead and go to uh, your Cloud Pro option and this is what it looks like and you're going to click add new server you already you only have one data center you'll assign the available CPUs as you can see I have 13 and almost 7 gigs of RAM and 130 gigs of storage but you won't have that you'll have probably something more like this but here's the tricky part you need to do it's not tricky the OS type please choose Ubuntu 14 stable edition right here 64 bit and or CentOS 6.5 uh, nothing of these ones you, you can but you don't need them and it will eat up a lot of resources on your server then click sent OS 6.5 64 bit or the 32 bit and click complete it will build your server and as you, this is a brand new one right that's why there's just a little alert in fact you can see this installed 2.5 which is today and uh, here's your IP address this is super important so what we're gonna do uh, you don't have to do this but I like using putty you can click on the console connection here which is right next to your new virtual machine so go ahead and click it it'll open up a new browser and will give you access to your server. I just like this, which is fine. I, I that's cool. You can use it if you want. I'm not. I just like Putty because I'm used to Putty. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit 104. Oops. <laughs> I hit enter without putting in the information. So 104.233.79.1789. I'm gonna hit enter this time. 
and your default username when you first set it up is root. It tells you your password there, AH. So click the little I icon to get your password. So AH U P E N U T at. Okay, let me in. Now, what you're going to want to do next is open up another browser tab. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to click on a uh, new window here. I'm going to bring it over. I'm going to do uh, SW update dot openvpn.org I'm going to get this bigger for you guys okay so we're going to scroll down to the most recent date as you can see right here it says the October 12, 2015 was the newest edition so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so you can kind of see what I'm seeing here and you're going to click on your version of CentOS that we installed here or Ubuntu so I installed this one which is CentOS uh, x86 and 64 which we have a 64 bit so you're gonna go ahead and right click on the version you want copy link address and once you're there you're gonna go I can close this out now that we're done with it you'll do w get and then paste this in hit enter and it's going it's downloading that to your local server that you just built right now so it's gonna go ahead and download it and it saved it so we're gonna hit ls and now you can see I have it right here. It says one at the end because I've already downloaded this already and I've set the stage for you, but I'm going to do it again so you guys can get used to it. Now, if you are on a Ubuntu machine, you're going to do sudo and then dpkg tac i and then open VPN and then enter. Well, I, I don't really need to do that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that open VPN that you saw up there because it looks confusing, so I'm going to do rm and then uh, tap period 1. Go ahead and continue with the installation, so we're going to say yum and then install and then open VPN and click enter. And it's going to ask you, the uh, it's going to tell you the size it's going to take up, which is 47 megs, which is nothing, so go ahead and say y and then yes. And it will go through the installation process. So as you see here, sorry about that. I had it. Uh, I already installed the uh, OpenVPN, and as you saw earlier, I had to go ahead and, and um, remove the installation or uninstall it from a Linux installation. But anyways, this is what you want to see. This is why I went ahead because I wanted to give you step by step. So when you actually do it, this is what you should see. Uh, so you need to do something. This is our first step. So step one it says you successfully installed this, but here's the next step. You need to change the password, the default password. So to do that, you do pass WD and then open VPN. It says you're going to change the password. That's good. We want to do that. So use a super secret password. <laughs> you know, use a strong one. And it's been successfully taken. So then it says to go ahead and configure this, you need to go to this website right here, HTTP, and then um, admin. So let's go there. Uh, let's open up another tab, and we're going to do HTTPS, PS, and then 19, why did I 19? 4 slash 104 4.223.943. And once we do that, I'm going to bring it over on my side here. If everything's good. So HTTPS semicolon 104.233.91. Oh, nope, I messed up. Okay, give it a second. So we'll do 79. That was our other one I used, but uh, I didn't need it now. 79162 colon forward slash. And then we're going to say slash forward slash admin. And if it took, yeah, that's right. We want to see this. So hit advance. And the only reason why you're seeing that this is not a private connection is because it's using a something called a self-signed certificate. And uh, that's because we haven't assigned a certificate to it. And we're not going to, as you have to pay for one of those. Uh, but we don't need it right now. We trust this. We just created it. So go ahead and hit, in, uh, put your open VPN as your default username and the super secret password you just made. Go ahead and agree to this installation. And the service is the server is on with the on status so go ahead and minimize this and what we'll do is our very important part under general authentication you're gonna go ahead and say local 
Now, if you are familiar with any of these other settings, go ahead and please use them. I, I do, I like using Radius and LDAP, but uh, that's for advanced configurations that you will need to learn and set up. So go ahead and hit Save Settings, update the running server, go to User Management next, and go to User Permissions. Here's the good part. You need to make a user. So I just said Matt. I'm going to say Auto Login. I'm not an admin. Don't need to make one right now. There's already one. And we're going to hit Save Settings and update the running server. Here's a good portion for you to pay attention. You are only licensed for two concurrent users uh, with the OpenVPN uh, one that we downloaded here. If you love the service like I do, go ahead and buy one and uh, it gives you more access to uh, concurrent users, meaning concurrent just means like I can use this machine and my cell phone as an example. Or I can use this machine, my cell phone, and an iPad, which would be a better example since it would be three concurrent sessions going on at the same time. Once that's done, we're good. We set up uh, our server with our IP address, we set up the ports that automatically happen, everything happened and now you can just do what you need to do. So let's go to our new domain here, oops, our, uh, sorry, not our new domain, but our client, because now you need the actual service. So we're going to do https colon forward slash forward slash that same IP address we just did, 233.79.168. Just no for like that. So 162 and then comma or colon 943. Your address is going to be different. I'm going to hit enter, and Google Chrome is going to automatically detect the best service for me once I finish putting in this stuff. Oh, I forgot. You know what I forgot to do, which is why I'm glad I did this. So let's go ahead and go under user permissions. Well, uh, go back to the user management because we need to set a password for Matt. That's not very secure. So go ahead and hit show. And we don't have a password set. See, so says no password set. So let's go ahead and sign up and make a new password. And all that stuff's fine. Leave everything alone as it is and hit save settings. So I went ahead and saved those settings. Now let's go ahead and open up that other tab. I use my username as Matt, and I'm going to use that same password I just created for him. And here we go. Uh, click here to continue to download, otherwise you will be automatically connected to the installation. So click the download, hit keep, let it install. As you can see, it's number two for me because I've already installed this twice. So we're going to click on this MSI and let it install. Once the installation, if you get your UAC, go ahead and say run and let it connect. Or let it finish installing on your user platform. Set or your Outlook, or not Outlook on your Windows machine or Mac machine or Linux machine. And once that's finished installing, it's gonna, as you see, it's gonna automatically connect after the installation is finished. So go ahead and let it finish doing its thing. Now you can't see it, but there's a little icon on my bottom. You can go ahead and, so on the, as my icon, you can right click and hit uh, connect to. And if it's set up correctly, it's going to try to connect. And it says, do you want to allow VPN using an unverified profile? Yes, I do. It's not unverified. And we're just going to keep letting it go here. Okay, there it is. It tells you, it says right here, that there's an IP I'm connected to and that it's been established. And if we check that, we go ahead and open up command prompt and say ipconfig slash all, because I want to see that too. Okay, dokie. Or Ethernet 5, our tap address. So this is our new um, IP assigned from OpenVPN using DNS server 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. And uh, so that's it. You're, you're connected. Uh, we can ping the server. Because obviously, if you, I'll show you the difference. So we can say uh, ping. Well, I guess you could still ping it. But let's say you had another machine or your concurrent user using the same thing. You can connect, uh, ping each other, as it were. And if we go ahead and refresh this list here, uh, there's my password, and it tells me right here.
there's my concurrent user. So you can see if somebody hopped on to your VPN, the IP address it was assigned. And you can change that IP address, obviously. You're going to want to do that. And you can block that person. So I'm going to blur this out because that's my IP address. I don't want people hacking it. But there you go. You are connected securely and safely and encryptedly. And uh, that's it. Now, you can do all kinds of things, which I'll probably talk about later, which is how to do, how to get, because you're not going to remember your IP address all the time if you're a basic user. Uh, you're going to set up reverse DNS and probably go to, like, GoDaddy and assign yourself. So something like secure dot, you know, myhouse.com or dot whatever, and uh, hit continue, and then assign that IP address that you just got here to your... Um, GoDaddy or your Google or whatever you're going to do, DNS records, and it will point there like uh, uh, like I did for some of these other VMs that I have down here. So that's it. You're done. Uh, it's almost a 20 minute <laughs> video, so I'm going to close it up here. Again, I want to thank everybody. If you have any questions on what to do next, uh, really there's nothing much for you to do next. You are connected. So uh, make sure that's done and uh, Thank you for viewing and listening this video. If you like it, please like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. Or if you have any other thoughts besides those, please leave a comment below. Have a great one.